So what I've put here is a sort of big picture view of what I want to talk about today. And exactly how much of it I'll get through isn't necessarily clear. But where I want to get to is I want you to have a picture in your mind for how we can control flow and the location of different components of a flow with relatively high accuracy using relatively straightforward techniques. So where we want to get to is the red. But we can't get there right away. First we have to back up and we have to see what we've done so far and what we need to add to that to understand how we get here. All right, so we've talked about hydraulic circuit analysis. And the key thing that this hydraulic circuit analysis gave us were pressure drops and flow rates through channels in this relatively straightforward limiting case where we assumed that everything was described by the Hagen Purcell law. We added some complexity if we assumed that the, the walls were flexible or that the fluid was compressible, and that made things complex. But fundamentally, this, as we described it, uh, was still a very straightforward description. So we know how to control the total amount of flow going in this channel or that channel. And that means that we can control, if I have multiple inputs into one channel, I can control how much each of those flows are. And I can predict this with this linear algebraic description. But I need to figure out, how does that empower me to do this? And that comes from the basic idea of laminar flow patterning. And this laminar flow patterning idea comes from uh, an observation that many people have made, and which is relatively easy to describe in terms of non-dimensional parameters, that when we combine together several different flows in a microfluidic device, we see very little diffusion and very little mixing of those fluids. Now the foundation for understanding that is basically understanding the role of the Reynolds number and the Peclet number in these microscale flows. And those non-dimensional parameters, in turn, come from a non-dimensionalization of the governing equations. So we want to get to the end, but to get there we need to start here. So we'll start by talking about the diffusion equation how we non-dimensionalize that to get the Peclet number, remind ourselves of the fact that when we non-dimensionalize the Navier-Stokes equations, we get the Reynolds number. Then we'll make an observation about the magnitudes of Reynolds numbers and Peclet numbers in most microscale flows. We'll combine that with experimental observation that will basically convince us that we can pattern the structure of these flows just by controlling the magnitude of the flow rates, just these cues that we've been calculating with hydraulic circuit analysis. And that will then inform the general idea that, in fact, if I want to take a chemical and I want to only put it on the rightmost 37% of a channel, or if I have a particle and I want to control where that particle position is, and I'd like to put it 14.7 microns away from the top edge of a microfluidic device, that the calculations and modeling that go into that idea, this control of flow or control of particles, basically just comes from a hydraulic circuit analysis combined with a very convenient simplification, which is basically that I can ignore diffusion. This will not apply for every single device that we'll consider, but it will apply for most of the routine microfluidic devices that we might create. Devices that have dimensions that are tens of microns, where we're applying pressures and generating flows that are hundreds of microns per, per second. We'll show that we can violate these assumptions pretty easily just by cranking up a really big pressure, or making a really big device, small device, etc. But for the mainstream microfluidic device uh, that is the most common uh, in microfluidic labs, we'll find that we can satisfy these limits, and that leads us to a specific approach for controlling the flow.